Welcome back to Bully Ball, a San Francisco 49er podcast. It's week seven. The 49ers are headed home after a two-week road trip where they're, they got banged up. One and one, they split that road trip, so they're heading home to face the Chiefs in week seven. Uh, we have special guest with us, Chris Style from the Arrowhead Chief podcast. How's it going today, sir? How you doing, man? Right. Thanks for having me on. Yes, sir. We're doing good. Um, I was on their podcast last night. I'll leave the link in the bio. Make sure to go check that out. And uh, go ahead and tell the audience a little bit about you guys. Um, yeah, um, Arrowhead Chief Podcast. Uh, I've been doing it for a little, about two years now. Um, I started in September of 2020. And uh, I started off by myself uh, didn't do an audio. Then I kind of did a little bit of YouTube, but I still maintain the audio this year is probably the first year i've been doing live streams and this is the first year i've had a co-host who you met yesterday clarence he's the first year time being on sometimes i used to have my cousin you know shout out to my cousin mark he used to come on with me sometimes but this year clarence is like my official co-host so yeah i've been doing it for two years now it's going strong you know growing growing going big so yeah definitely and yeah, Chris and Clarence, they very, very knowledgeable about, you know, the Chiefs and just the NFL in general at yeah. a great time on their podcast. It was awesome. So let's let's dive right in. You know, let's get right into this. Um, you know, the Chiefs probably top three team in the NFL right now, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, so what would you say like the strengths and the weaknesses are of this Chiefs team? Um, well, on offense, it starts with 15. I mean, <laughs> everything starts, <laughs> everything is running through Patrick Mahomes, and he makes that up, you know, without him, you know, we'd be probably average on offense. So he makes that thing go. And I was, you know, it, going into the season, it was the offensive line. They've had their struggles. Um, I still think when they're at their best, at their core, they're one of the best offensive lines. It's just, you know, the tackles are kind of our weakest part. Orlando Brown came in. He wanted to get paid like a top three uh, left tackle. He hasn't been playing like it. I don't think he's going to get that. I wouldn't be surprised if they let him walk next year and they try to go through the draft to get a left tackle or maybe through free agency get a different left tackle. But he hasn't lived up to the to the billing that we thought we were going to get with him, him being second year into this offense, you know, <clears throat> and being able to uh, man up that left tackle position. And then on the right side, Andrew Wiley, he, we've always knew he was the weakest link, and we just, you know, hope he can just hold on. Hopefully we can get Lucas Niang come back and man up that right tackle. A lot of fans didn't like – I thought Lucas Niang did a good job for being on the right side, but some fans didn't like him. I think he's better than Wiley. He can't get no worse. So, <laughs> But I would say the weakest point on our offense is probably our running game. And it's not so much a lack of not having good running backs. It's more so, you know, Andy Reid, he doesn't like to run the football. Yeah. He, he wants to throw. <laughs> and since he's had Mahomes, he really wants to throw the football. Like, and, and you can't blame him. You want the ball in 15's hands. And any team who has a great quarterback, you want the ball in their hands. I'm sure Buffalo Bills – they want 17 to have the ball in his hands. They Tom Brady, Tampa Bay, they want Tom Brady to have the ball in his hands. So I get it, but I do want – I would love Andy to incorporate the run just a little bit more to just make it a balance and don't make it so much Patrick Mahomes be great. <laughs> you know, yeah, it should always be that. Like it should be a balanced attack so he can, you know, pick and choose his spots. When we need him to be great, yeah, be great, but – it don't always have to be hero ball all the time where he's got to scramble to the right, to his left, and then throw a pass off the platform and everybody's, whoa, you know, because when it works, yeah, it's great. But when it don't work, it's like, ah, you know, like, so I would say the weakness is our, our uh, running game on defense right now. Our weakness, a lot of people will say our corners. I don't think it's our corners. I think it's our pass rush. Our pat, like we, we're top. In the league and getting pressures, we just we don't get home. <laughs> we can't we can't get home with a three man rush, four man rush. It's like we get right there and then they get the ball out quick. And so <clears throat> I would like them to get pressure. I mean, Chris Jones is is an all star, you know, defensive tackle. But when you just got him, you triple and double team him, and you're not worried about Frank Clark and 
you know, Carlos done left. We brought him on, and we thought, okay, Carlos has still got a little left in the tank. He still gets sacks. If he can give us seven to eight sacks, that's a good year for us. Yeah. We, we need that. You know, last year, if we had that last year, we might have won the Super Bowl last year. So, um, yeah, I would say our pass. I mean, our corners are young. We have young corners, and then we never we we only got to see our first round corner trip McDuffie in one game, and then when that one game he played really well, they didn't throw it to his side. He was covering the guy that he was on, and then he got hurt because the dumb turf in Arizona. Yep. <laughs> It is it, it tore his you know hurt his hamstring and he's been out. He might hopefully he comes back this week. And then um, but yeah, I, I think you know, like I said on defense, it's our pass rush just getting home and getting turnovers. Getting to- turnovers is something that we're not very good at this year. So yeah. I like that. Yeah. And you spoke a little bit about the O line. For those that wa- are watching and don't know, the Chiefs were really, really close to signing. Uh, Trent Williams a couple yeah. years back when yeah. he was a free agent on the 49ers. Yeah. Uh, so we're glad that didn't happen. <laughs> uh, Trent Williams is practicing this week, so he should be playing in this game as well. Frank um, Clark got his work cut out for him. <laughs> yeah. I did see, I looked at the injury report for the Chiefs uh, a minute ago, just really quickly, and I saw Joe Tooney on there. Your guys is, I believe he's left guard, correct? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. He didn't participate with the ankle injury. You have any any news on him or well, what's going on with that? Well, I was listening to the radio earlier. Uh, 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 Pete Sweeney, he was over uh, one of the top publications in chief, uh, Arrowhead, uh, Arrowhead Pride. Um, he said that it was more so a rest day for him. Like they just wanted to rest the ankle. Uh, they don't want to put him out there. So I'm pretty. They say they're very optimistic that he will play. On Sunday, gotcha. so we definitely need them. <laughs> yeah, so that's good. So yeah. the injury report looked pretty clean. I don't even think I saw Trent McDuffie on there, so he might have he might have been a full participant. Yeah, um, Andy Andy Reid kind of tried to play it coy and like because we got him and Willie Gay back, and it was like he was like we'll see. But I don't if he's ready to go, I think they activate him and play him this week. Gotcha. And so, you know, you talked a little bit about the weaknesses and the strengths of the team, right? So let's say you were the 49ers head coach. You know the strengths and weaknesses of the Chiefs. How would you attack the Chiefs' offense and defense as the opposing team? Well, on offense, I would – because one thing that's been hurt, and and it might have to do with us losing Willie Gay for the four game suspension. Because ever since he's been gone, our run our run defense has gone down. Like we were top in run defense, and then once he got suspended, it just went downhill. And I think a lot of teams have learned, like, because you guys are one of the best at running the football, and you guys incorporate a fullback. And I've seen a lot of teams do a lot of that eye formation, run a fullback right at the Chiefs, and, and that's been key. The Raiders did it, um, and last week Devin, they did it with Devin Singletary. So I think that would be a, a big key for you guys is to just line up eye formation and just play bully ball and just push <laughs> push these – try to push these defensive tackles to the second level and, and hopefully these linebackers are not tackling well. So that's how I would attack and then use that play-action pass and test these corners. Um, these young corners like Buffalo did eventually because Spags is going to blitz. He's going to try to blitz and send a, a Legereus Snee, who's our best blitzing corner on the slot. He's going to, you know, bring a safety, try to blitz probably like Juan Thornhill or Reed on the edge and try to bring in the house on Jimmy G to, you know, make him throw some. So possibly send Ayuk or send a, a Debo streaking down the field and possibly try to get you one, a big play, or maybe even a touchdown on these young corners. Gotcha. Yeah, and, um, you know, you had spoke about the Chiefs not getting many turnovers. Yeah. You know, Jimmy G, he, yeah. he's going to he's gonna <laughs> give you one, and you just you got to take advantage of it yeah, when it comes because yeah. he's going to throw one. And then, um, on de- and then on defense, sorry, but on defense, if I uh, – if you wanted to, well, if you guys are on defense, um, if I were to attack the Chiefs, it's plain and simple. Attack these tackles, man. Nick Bosa, if he's healthy, put him on Orlando Brown. <laughs> it just go full steam ahead, man. Same thing. Whoever else is on the other side, go at Wiley and just, you know, 
Hopefully, you just hope and pray that that Mahomes doesn't do, you know, the Mahomes stuff and streak right or go right and throw a pass out. And you just, if you get home, hey, you can make you can make Mahomes a little jittery. And he now he's not trusting the offensive line and he's throwing bad passes or whatever like that. That's what you hope for, you know, if you're the defense of the San Francisco 49ers. I mean, you guys saw it in the Super Bowl, like yeah. You was getting pressure on him, and he made a couple bad throws. He made two bad interceptions that probably could have almost cost us the game. So, definitely, that's what I would do if I was San Francisco. Yeah, definitely. And today we had the the 49ers injury report, so we have a little bit of news on who should be playing and who shouldn't. Uh, Eric Armstead, not going to play again this week, probably. Uh, Samsung Ebukam didn't practice today, Achilles injury. Um, Teleno Hufanga, no practice, still in concussion protocol. No. And Charvarius Ward with the groin injury he injured last week. Um, they should be getting some reinforcements in Bosa, Jimmy Ward, and um, Jason Verrett, who was a starting corner for us a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. But with that being said, uh, Charvarius Ward, we talked about on your guys' pod yesterday. You know, why Why the Chiefs let him walk? Um. I just think that Brett, Brett Veach, he doesn't generally pay guys at a certain age. And I think was Severus was like 26 right now, 25, 26. 26 or 27, yeah, something but like that. Usually when they get about 26, 27, he's not going to give them a big contract. But not just the age. I just think that, like I said yesterday on the pod, Severus Ward was he, – he was a good corner. He's a He was a good corner for us. But he had his ups and downs. Like the way he's locking down with you guys, and maybe it's just the scheme fit. Like maybe he fits your scheme a little bit more. That's why he's, you know, being he's probably a lot better with you guys. I just think that there was times where he gave up big plays and crucial moments. And I just think that they was like, nah, we're not gonna pay him. We're not. And then and then I think going into the season, like I said, they were thinking they're gonna pay. Tyreek Hill, and they were going to think they're going to play Orlando Brown Jr. too because they made him an offer and he turned it down because he wanted to be a top left tackle. So they had, <laughs> it was a it was a process of elimination that we're going to pay Tyreek, we're going to pay Orlando Brown, we'll let Shavarius Ward walk, and then that's why they went corner crazy in the draft. So. <laughs> Yeah, and it's it's kind of one of those things we just saw with the the Patriots. You know, they let J.C. Jackson walk, got mm-hmm. that huge contract in uh, L.A., and then he he got benched like, this last week. He got benched, so mm-hmm. because it's one of those things. Because most corners from the Patriots, when they leave somewhere else, they don't do good. The only reason why Gilmore is still good because Gilmore was good when he was with Carolina. <laughs> yeah, true. He was already a beast. Very true. And so I have another question about this offense. So, you know, you guys have Andy Reid, you know, great offensive mind, great head coach, you know, everywhere he's been. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you have offensive coordinator, Eric, I don't know how do you say it, Benemy? Benemy? Benemy, Benemy, yeah. Benemy. Um, you know, he's been the offensive coordinator, I believe it said for five years now. Ever and since, the offense ever- is – Ever since Mahomes became the starter, 2018. Yeah, and the offense has been insane since Mm -hmm. he's become the offensive coordinator. Yeah. Why do you think he hasn't become a head coach yet? And do you think he's the mastermind behind the offense, or is that Andy Reid? I mean, I think think Andy Reid is the mastermind. I mean, this is his offense, the West Coast offense. This is his his sauce. (laughs) Now, do I think – what Eric Bieniemy adds to it, yeah, I think he adds running game element because he was the running back coach and he's a former running back himself. So I think he adds that. That's why. And then also when they brought in Matt Nagy back, I think Matt Nagy brings in what he brings in as far as quarterback, you know, the passing game and all that stuff. So I think. But going back to Eric Bieniemy, as far as him not being a head coach, honestly, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I. Uh, you know, I don't like to bring race into everything, but <laughs> when you, you you look at the down and it's like, you know, you got Nathaniel Hackett and you got the dude in the break, yeah. who's coaching the Bears and you got, you know, you see some of these coaches that get hired and it's like, 
really? Like Eric B. Enemy couldn't get a job. Like he couldn't co- he couldn't coach the Broncos right now. Like I think the Broncos would probably be better right now if Eric B. Enemy was the head coach. You know exactly. You at, I mean, look at pl- people like Cliff Kingsbury who wasn't even good when he was in college. Yeah. Like he had Patrick Mahomes for like four years, and yeah, the offense was great, but they were never good teams. And then. You know, he he went to USC thinking that he was going to be the okay. He could be the OC at USC and then possibly get a coaching job at a you know Power Five conference. And then all of a sudden, he's the coach of the Cardinals, and it's like, <laughs> but Airbnb he can't get a job. Like, so I don't know. Uh, you know, it, it it it's something behind the scenes. They try to make it seem like he's like this loose cannon, and he because uh, he, he's he's fiery, and you know. But my thing is this that. If there was a problem with the enemy, I think Patrick Mahomes would have a problem with the enemy. And if Patrick Mahomes had a problem with the enemy, the enemy wouldn't be here. He wouldn't exactly. Be, he wouldn't if he went to management, Brett Veach, and he went to Andy Reid and he said, Look, we gotta get this guy out of here. I'm not feeling him. He would be gone. Matt Nagy would be our OC right now. So if 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 him and Patrick Mahomes is good, then why can't he be you know, the head coach of one of these franchises. I, I just, I don't understand. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it, it blew my mind because I think last offseason he interviewed for like five head coaching jobs, didn't get one of them. And oh, I, wow. he would have been top of my list. Yeah. So that was a, that was shocking to me at least as well. Um, so you spoke on Patrick Mahomes, you know, you said you get a little pressure on him. You could frazzle him a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um the 49ers really struggle with mobile guys, mm-hmm. um, you know, guys that can get out the pocket, kind of escape, evade. Mm. So how how does a team stop Patrick Mahomes? Because even when a team does frazzle him, it take, they can score in 17 seconds, 30 yeah. seconds. Like yeah. how, how do you stop this offense with Patrick Mahomes at the helm? Um, well, there's a little bit. Something too. I don't think it's like a major problem, but I do think he struggles when defenses drop eight, when they drop into a zone, drop eight in coverage, and just rush for. If you can rush with your front four, he sometimes has problems with that, those type of defenses. The one thing you don't want to do is blitz him. If you send the house at him, he'll kill you. You know every time, but because <laughs> he knows how to extend the play with his arm and you know with his retreating skills he just knows how to make it happen but if you can rush with your front four and drop eight in coverage sometimes he has problems with that and that's the formula to stop it and that's what the Bengals did in the second half of the afc championship game that's what happened last week in in, in the buffalo game and that's what happened when we played the colts this year like they dropped eight in coverage and said, we're not going to let nothing go deep. You are going to make you try to run the football. That's what they want you to do. We're going to make you be patient, take the easy stuff. Cause Patrick, he wants to highlight real touchdown down the field, but now you don't have Tyree kill to do that anymore. So now you have to be patient. So that's one thing that he's had his struggles with, but he's gotten a lot better with. Yeah. And, you know, like you said, Tyree Kill, his favorite weapon, left. But you still have Travis Kelsey who, yeah, yeah. you know, it doesn't seem like any team in the NFL can guard the guy. <laughs> like no, no. four touchdowns in a game, like, and they were bracketing him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What, do, what do you do with him? Do you – a safety, a linebacker? What are, What's the you, best route to guard him? You got to be physical with Travis Kelsey. You have to be at the line of scrimmage. You got to push him, and you got to see if the referees are going to call that stuff. Sometimes they don't call it, and when when most teams who are successful against Travis Kelsey is when he's not getting calls, when he's not getting holding calls, when when they're allowing when they're allowing the defense to play with him and be physical, then he has a little bit of problem. He he has his issues when his when teams are allowed to throw him on the ground and grab on him and pull on him. But if they if the if teams can't get a hand on him, he's a mismatch. He's a mismatch for corners because he's too big, and he's a mismatch for safeties because he's faster than what people give him credit for. So yeah, and you know, it's frustrating to all 49er fans who see Travis Kelsey go out and do this thing. <laughs> And then they look and say, hey, we got George Kittle. 
but he's getting yeah. one, two, three targets a game. Yeah, so Kiddo's <laughs> nice, man. Like, you know, in Chiefs, you know, us in Chiefs Kingdom, you know, we always have because we love our team, you know, we love our players, just like you love y'all players. So when the, everybody bring who's number one tight end, everybody says Kiddo because he can block. And it's like, no, he won't try. We think Travis is the best. So, you know, and I have no problem with 49er fans saying George Kittle is the you know the best tight end because he is one of the best. Like, I'm mad that we could have drafted him in the yeah. third round. We we drafted a receiver that's not even in the league no more. We could have had him and Travis Kelsey on the same two tight end set. Man, that we'd be killing teams right now. <laughs> I will say, I will say, 49er fans have been uh, turning the tide a little bit this year, mm-hmm. you know, because they're upset Kittle ain't getting used. A lot more you see are saying, hey, yeah, Kelsey looks like he's, he's the guy, <laughs> uh, unquestionably. Yeah, I mean, every year they try to say some other like Mark Andrews, which Mark Andrews is good, and I'm not yeah. taking nothing away of Mark. Dar- Dan Waller, it's a lot of good tight ends in the league. It's just that when you talk about consistency, and nope, we've never seen nothing like Travis Kelsey, who's yeah. averaging 12, 1,300 yards a season. It's like we had Tony Gonzalez for years, and he's probably one of the greatest of all times. But we've never seen nothing like Travis Kelsey. Yeah, definitely. Definitely tight ends have been uh, reinvented in this generation, yeah, I would yeah. say. Yeah. Uh, so we have we have one segment on this channel that we we love to do, and it's what makes our channel a little bit different. That's why we named it Bully Ball. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we have this thing. It's called the Bully of the Week, and okay. it's the player that we give an award to saying, like, hey, it may not be the MVP of the, the game, right, but it's the guy that was the most physical, like, it could be on offense or defense, and they were just terrorizing the other team. They caused, you know, an impact hmm. on the game. Okay. Um, so my question is, who is your predic- prediction for Bully of the Week for the Chiefs? Um, I'm going to go with linebacker Willie Gay. Um, Willie Gay is the one who brings the energy on that linebacker crew. He's He's a physical freak. Like, you know, and you guys have Fred Warner. He has skills like Fred Warner. Like the kid, he ran a 4-3 in the 40. He, so he's a linebacker who moves like a corner. So he's good in coverage like Fred Warner. Like he is, and he can hit. It's like he's like I said, he's sideline to sideline. We missed him so much in the running game because he's good at diagnosing running games. Like I love Nick Bowden, but Nick Bowden missed him a lot because he was the one who would – get to the line. He was so fast. He would get to the runner so fast. It would have helped Nick Bolton to come right behind him or whatever linebacker to come right behind him. So yeah, Willie Gay is our bully ball guy. <laughs> I like that projection. Cause I was going to, I was thinking Nick Bolton was going to be the answer, but I like, I like that better. Yeah. Willie, like Gay, Willie, yeah, Willie Gay is our bully ball guy for real. My projection for this week is it has to be Nick Bosa. You know, if yeah, he's course. back and playing, <laughs> you know, our against the Falcons last week, the 49ers got bullied on both mm-hmm. sides of the football on the mm-hmm. lines because mm-hmm. they were missing everybody. Right. And, you know, Nick Bosa, he's still, I think, tied or he's in second for sacks on the year and he's missed two games. Mm-hmm. The dude's just a game changer. So, yeah, he is. It's a cop out for me, obviously, picking Nick Bosa, but no, I had no, to do that. If I, if I had Nick Bosa, I'd pick Nick <laughs> Bosa. Uh, and then uh, last thing, your score projection for the game. We did it yesterday, but, you know, if you have an update or if you just want to reiterate it for the people on the channel. I say 28-24. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, 28-24. I'm a, yeah, I'm going to keep the same score. Twenty. I think it's going to be a tight game. I don't think, like, we're going to come into 49 Ville and just run over you guys. No, you guys have too good of a defense. And you got, got you guys got a good offense, too. You know, Kyle Shanahan is one of the better coaches in the league. He's top five to me. I think he's a top five head coach in this league. So he's going to have you guys ready. You guys are coming off of a tough loss against a team that y'all probably should have beat had you had all your players out there. You probably should have destroyed the Falcons. So – I, I I just think you guys are gonna get. You're at home, you know what I'm saying. You've been on, like you said, you've been on the road. You're finally at home. The crowd's gonna be going crazy. Yeah, I I, I think it's gonna be a close game, but I I just think we're gonna pull it out at the end. 
All right, I like it. And I, I did update mine a little bit, you know, once I thought about it, once mm-hmm. I saw who was coming back this week. Um, so when I was on their podcast, I had said 30 to 17 Chiefs mm-hmm. winning that game. I up I'm updating it to 24 to 30. Okay. Still Chiefs winning the game, but mm-hmm. I think the 49ers offense played well last week. They were just dropping a couple balls, had a couple oh, flags. Um and I think they're going to correct that this week and playing at home, like you said. But, you know, I think the firepower of the Chiefs offense gets it done in the end. Whether it be a late touchdown or whatever, I think they get the job done in the end. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. I don't really, five and two sound better than four, four and three going into the bye week. So, <laughs> I yeah. Think, and- I, I think if we go four and three, Chiefs Keaton might fall, fall apart a little bit if we go four and three into the bye. Yeah. <laughs> and with that said, actually, I had one more uh, question for you Chiefs, because we we play every team in the AFC West this year. Mm-hmm. So, could you give us a little, you know, synopsis of all these teams you guys have in that division? Um. Well, <laughs> uh, how can I say? Uh, Chargers. Let's talk about the Chargers now. Talent wise, on paper, the Chargers should be one of the best teams in the league, not just AFC. He should be one of the best teams in the league. Justin Herbert is a baller. We're not going to take nothing away from that kid. That kid, his trajectory is up. But the problem is it's just health, and it's always health with the Chargers. They've always, in our division, have always had the best rosters. Even back in the days with the Phillip Rivers, they've yeah. always had the best rosters, best receivers, best defensive players, but they always just get hurt or they choke. That's, that's what they do. <laughs> but <laughs> – that's what they do now. Uh, I'm, I'm not if they get healthy somewhat, and JC Jackson can somewhat be better later on in the season. I don't know if that ankle injury is messing with him, and they brought him back too soon. Maybe they probably should have put him on IR and waited to bring him back till he was fully healthy. I think that's the problem with JC Jackson. That's probably why he got benched. Um, but they got Asante Samuel Jr., who's a baller, Derwin James. Come on, man. Uh, Khalil Mack. Now, I think Khalil yeah. Mack is suffering because Joe Bo- Joey Bosa is hurt. But when Bosa gets back, their, their pass rush is just as good as anybody in the league. You know, they gave us problems when we played them. We, we, I ain't going to lie. We squeaked that win out. <laughs> we squeaked that win out because they were giving us problems. Their offensive line got a little hurt, but, you know, they're playing a little bit better. Um but yeah, the Chargers are still uh, can be a formidable opponent. It's just they can't get out of their own way. And Staley, he just he don't know when to be aggressive. He don't know when to be conservative. You know, you know. So that might be the problem too. Their head coach, they might be looking for a new head coach next year. Maybe Eric B. Enemy can get that job. Hey, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, Broncos. They're just terrible, like, <laughs> and they beat I, us. Yeah, I, and I still, and I still don't understand how they. <laughs> that was a twelve to eleven or something like uh, that. Eleven to ten. Oh man, baseball score, like. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they're just now defensively, they're actually not bad. They have they have a, a elite corner in Patrick Sertain Jr. Yeah, that that kid is a baller. Like he he is he's the real deal. Um, Bradley Chubbs, he's he's okay as a pass rusher. He's kind of inconsistent, but he's okay. But their defenses are actually okay. It's their offense. They then Nathaniel Hackett is obviously over his head. They brought him in because they thought they could trade for Aaron Rodgers, and that didn't happen. So now he's like a fish out of water, and he's <laughs> got a quarterback who looks like he might. I don't want to say Russell Wilson is cooked. But I just don't think him and that Daniel Hackett is is meshing well. I think that they need to get a new coach in there, somebody who's you know competent, and maybe Russell will look a lot better. But obviously, Russ hasn't played well either. He's making bad decisions. He hasn't run like he used to run. Yeah. Um, the, and then they lost their best player in that running back, Javante Williams. He's out for the season. And Melvin Gordon, he can't stop fumbling the football. So yeah. that's why they don't run him. That's why they didn't run him last year, last uh, last night or Monday night, because they scared. They're scared to run him. They scared he's gonna fumble the football. <laughs> so yeah, they're they're just a mess. And then the Raiders are just the Raiders. Like I just they have they have talent over there too. I don't 
trust their defense. I think their defense is their weakest link there, especially their secondary. I just don't think their secondary is that good. Yeah, Devontae Adams is a ball. Hunter Renfro is one of the more underrated wide receivers in the league. It's just Derek Carr. Like, if you give Derek Carr time, yeah, he'll pick you apart. But once you get him rattled, he, he'll he throw you a couple of picks, and he'll fumble yeah. the football. And it, they live and die by Derek. I mean, any team lives and die by their quarterback, but – they really live and die by Derek Carr, you know, and I just think they're another team that just gets in their way. Like they got talent too. It's just they get in their own way. So <clears throat> that's that's just my synopsis of the uh, of the rest of the teams on the league. Chargers, they can be the one of the better teams. Like they if they weren't injured, I think they would be up there with, with the Chiefs and the Buffalo Bills on the AFC side. Like that would be the boogie like the, the team that you would have to be like. Yeah, Buffalo is probably the top team. Then the Chiefs, you got to watch out for the Chargers. Yeah. You know, you got to watch out for it because they got the quarterback and they got the, the key players. Now, Keenan Allen hasn't played. That hurt them a lot. So Mike Williams is getting double teamed now. So maybe when Keenan Allen comes back, I don't know, maybe the Chargers. That's a sleeper team to me that might be in the Odell Beckham sweepstakes. Like, you know, they keep talking about us in them sweepstakes. Watch out for the Chargers because they get Odell Beckham and he's healthy. He can make a difference in that team and he gets to stay in L.A. So that's another team you got to, you know, watch out for the Odell Beckham. If they make a, a trade with Carolina to go get DJ Moore or somebody like that. If they get another wide receiver on that team, they can be right back in it. So the Chargers are one of those teams that, you know, I, I you know, I have, as you know, respect for them because of their players, not so much of their coaching, but their players, you know, because one thing about yeah. the Chargers, the one thing, the misstep about the Chargers that we found out in this early, but we found out is that they're a first half team, but their scheme is so like, Remed- remedial <laughs> that in the second half you figure out their scheme they don't move the ball as much in the second half and a lot of teams come back on them that's what happened with the raiders the raiders came back in their first game when they yeah. played us we came back in the second half when they played the texans the texans almost came back on them so they're they're not a good second half team yeah that makes sense and like you said um so eric Bieniemy. You know, possibly Chargers, possibly Broncos. He could be staying in the division next year. Yeah, they, who knows? They, they would be they would be stupid. Either one of those teams. If, if that's if the Chargers, if the Chargers don't make the playoffs this year, I can see them getting rid of Staley. I can't see them getting rid of Staley. And and I, Nathaniel Hackett might not make it through the season. So yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> so <laughs> I I personally think that yeah. Broncos or Chargers would be stupid not to get the enemy. And plus, why wouldn't you want to bring the enemy in? He's been with the Chiefs for so many years. You could pick his brain. He knows Mahomes' tendencies. He knows the offensive tendencies. You know, he knows the defensive tendencies. So why wouldn't you bring somebody in who's been in the inside track of the team who's been giving you problems for the last six years? So exactly. And yeah, we we did see today. Travis Kelsey got a his contract restructured. Yeah. So yeah. then, yeah, the rumor started going. You know, Odell. How how would you feel? I, how would you feel with that? I, look, I'm not mad at us getting Odell because I'm never gonna downplay an offensive weapon to add to this offense. You know, if Odell is hap- health healthy, yes, he will help us out because then he you won't now Juju will be on the number two corner. And now you will have Odell and then, you know, Travis Kelsey, he will be able to open more things up for Kelsey and he'll be better, you know, in, in the middle of the field. He can stretch the field. If, if his, if he's healthy, this is if he's healthy, yeah. he, you know, cause coming back from ACL tear, it's not so much physical it's mental, you know, you can, you know, pushing off on that leg. He's one of those guys who can move around a little bit. So pushing off and, you know, cutting and all that stuff. Can will he be able to you know, mentally still do those things at a full speed? So I wouldn't be downplay it, but honestly, uh, me, I want a pass rush. I want us to go get another pass rush. We need one going again. If we're gonna see Josh Allen again in the playoffs, we need somebody who can get him down exactly. and help Chris Jones. Help Chris Jones out because Chris Jones is getting pressure, but it's just like they double, they triple team him, and it's like we're not scared of Frank Clark. George Karloffis, he's a rookie. He's getting, he's one of the top rookies getting pressure, but he's, you know, he's, you know, it's hard for a defensive end rookie to get sacks. Like 
you got to be Nick Bosa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got you, you got to be on that caliber to to be you know come in and just hit the ground running like. And he's not a Nick Bosa. He's he's a guy who he has a high motor and he has potential. Like next year, I think he's going to mold into the guy who can eventually get those type of sacks. But now he's still learning. He's still learning how to do de- double moves because in the NFL, let's you know, in college you can do a bull rush one move and get to the quarterback. In the NFL, you can do a bull rush, but then you gotta have a spin move. You gotta yeah. have a sweep under. Like you gotta have different moves. You can't just have one move because these offensive tackles are just too good and athletic for that. So, so yeah, I want to. Yeah, pass I like rush. it. <laughs> yeah, you can never have too many pass rushers in this no. league. No, you um, can't. Yeah, so that's all I got. You know, you got any closing remarks? Uh, one more time, where the people could find you. Um, yeah, uh, on uh, all streaming platforms, you can find us at uh, uh, you can find Arrowhead Cheap Podcast, whether you have Apple, Google, Stitcher, Breaker, Spotify, Anchor. We're on all streaming platforms. You can find Arrowhead Cheap Podcast. If you want to follow us on social media, it's AH Chief Podcast on Twitter and on Instagram. And then you can just type in Arrowhead Cheap Podcast on uh, Twitter, I mean, on uh, Facebook and TikTok. Uh, and also you can find us on uh, the every morning quarterback EMQ podcast.com slash locker dash room. It's one of the, it's the thing that they got fan access locker room, but they got different podcasts. Like I said, they have a 49 one. They have a, a, a Patriots one. They have a, a Buffalo one, a chargers one, and they have mine arrowhead cheap podcast. So you can find us on there too. Perfect. Hey, thanks for joining us. No Go problem, Go check man. them out. You know, very knowledgeable. His co-host, great guy as well. Yeah, shout out uh, Clarence, you know? man. Shout out Clarence. Yeah. <laughs> shout out Clarence. Hey, thanks for joining me. No problem, man. Anytime, man. Thank you. Money! <laughs>